Hi there, Bev. Well, Rishi Sunak's been under pressure from some within his own party to take a much harder line on China. So this speech at the Lord Mayor's banquet here in London was a, an opportunity, really, for him to put his stamp on things. And he said that the UK's past approach to Chinese relations was wishful thinking. It was really, without explicitly naming him, a... a criticism of the former Prime Minister David Cameron, who once famously had beers with Xi Jinping at his local pub here in England. Um, Mr Sunak says those days are over, and he highlighted things like the human rights abuses in Xinjiang, the erosion of democracy in Hong Kong, and of course most recently those uh, crackdowns on uh, protesters in China uh, in order to protect the zero Covid policy, which of course uh, led to the arrest of a BBC journalist, Ed Lawrence. Well, Mr Sunak has spoken about that uh, incident. He says that journalists uh, should be free to highlight those sorts of issues without being assaulted in China. But more broadly, he says it is time to admit that the UK's previous position simply wasn't working. Now, let's be clear, the so-called golden era is over along with the naive idea that trade would automatically lead to social and political reform. But nor should we rely on simplistic Cold War rhetoric. We recognise China poses a systemic challenge to our values and interests, a challenge that grows more acute as it moves towards even greater authoritarianism. Now, Bev, they may sound like strong words, but uh, there were plenty within the Conservative Party who wanted a more robust response from Rishi Sunak. And uh, his uh, predecessor, Liz Truss, had been on the verge of formally declaring China to be a threat. Uh, Rishi Sunak didn't go that far. In fact, he said that uh, Chinese, uh, the China's uh, importance and, uh, and strategic um, power couldn't really be underestimated. So there will be plenty of people within his own party who are unhappy with his approach, referring to it as a robust pragmatism. That's what the Prime Minister said it was. Uh, we've already had some reaction from the former leader, Ian Duncan Smith, uh, who says that the Prime Minister's speech uh, overnight sounded to him like appeasement. He's also, um, importantly, Nick, promised to stand up to Russia. Uh, and, and one of the key issues has been whether the military aid that Britain has been providing will continue to flow to Ukraine. Yeah, that's right. And uh, for all their faults, uh, Boris Johnson uh, and, uh, and Liz Truss uh, had been really lauded by the, the Ukrainians and the Americans for... Uh, their continued military support. Well, Rishi Sunak has said that that will continue. Um, he was in Kiev uh, recently meeting with uh, the, the president and now um, the first lady of Ukraine, Olena Zelenska, has come here to London. She's come to Downing Street to meet with Rishi Sunak's wife, Akshata Murti. And uh, the first lady spoke about the sexual violence uh, that has been committed in Ukraine by some Russian soldiers there. Uh, Mr Sunak, uh, recently committed to more anti-aircraft guns, more radar facilities, and he also extended the offer to train Ukrainian troops uh, here on British soil. Uh, and he told the audience overnight that he was deeply affected by what he saw in Ukraine. In Kyiv, I just saw how Russia's focus is shifting from bruising encounters on the battlefield to brutalising the civilian population. It was written in the scarred buildings and the piles of rubble lining the streets. In the stories of the first responders I met, from liberated Kherson, from the torture chambers to the booby traps left in children's toys. And Bev, the UK is uh, already one of the biggest military donors to Ukraine. It's already spent about £2.3 billion. Pounds. And despite the looming recession here, uh, Mr Sunak says that that support uh, will at the very least be maintained. Uh, in fact, it may grow. Yeah, welcome news, I'm sure, from Ukraine. Good to speak. Uh, thanks so much, Nick. Thanks, Bev.